And uh, first of all, my name is Rin Kajidara. I'm um, in Oingebete office, but I'm also volunteer of Yelsa East and also scientist. But enough about me. I'm excited to introduce our uh, first speaker of the day, uh, Eleanor Peter. She uh, did her bachelor in science, master in business. She acquired a lot of experience in quality uh, assurance. And uh, she is here today to tell us all about her position as a product manager. So here I welcome Eleanor to our virtual stage. Hello, everybody. One moment, I'm going to share my screen. So I hope everybody sees my screen. I'm just going to I'm just here to give you a short introduction about myself and what my career path until now has been how it's been. So I'm Eleonore Peter. Um, I'm 25 years old. And like I told you, I'm going to tell you now a little bit about myself. So I um, went to school in Krems and graduated there. It's, it was a normal gymnasium. And I graduated in the year 2013. And I also knew I wanted to do something with science. So I graduated like the main, main um, subjects like everybody else, but I also did like focus on chemistry that helped me a lot during my bachelor studies, studies for example. After school, I went on to do my bachelor degree um, on the University of Natural Resources and Life Science, the Boku in Vienna. And I did my degree in environmental and bioresource management. Um, that was in October 2013. I started um, my bachelor degree and I finished the degree after six semesters in summer of 2016. During the end of my bachelor degree, I, I thought a little bit about what I wanted to do from my master's degree um, and I decided I wanted to change my course a little bit. I wanted to go deeper into the, the science part. I wanted to do lab work, which was not included too much in my bachelor's degree. It was more like the theoretical science, but also a little bit of economic in there. So I wanted to be a little bit more deeper in the lab and in the science of it all, basically. So I looked for a master's degree I could, I could do, and I found to study food product development and resource management on the University of Applied Science in the Neusch Buchstab campus with work. Online, I found it just online the course and then researched it a little bit, and then I went uh, and went there and visited and talked to the students and to the professors. And so I decided to apply and I was taken in. So I, in 2016, I started my master's degree in food product development and resource management. I graduated there on, in 2018 in the fall, I think it was September. Um, what I didn't mention is um, that the, the study, the master's degree was part-time. That's in Austria, it, it, a lot of degrees on the on the FPAS, on the Fachhochschule, the master's degree are part-time. So they are focused like Fridays and Saturdays and sometimes like blocks um, during the week, but mostly only the weekends. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So um, I decided to start working part-time. And I got a job at Waldland Kulturstoffe GmbH um, as, as a trainee and um, started working there in 2017 part-time. The company Waldland, it's um, a company that produces herbs, spices, grains, also oil seeds, pressed cake and oil for the food and food industry, as well as medicinal plants for the pharmaceutical use. So I worked there in the quality control lab and that work that I did that during my studies really deepened my interest in food safety and also food safety um, in combination also with the pharmaceutical industry. So that's why I decided to do my master's degree, uh, my master thesis in that field. And I wanted to do it with the company. So I approached the Stammer in Wien and was able to write my master thesis there with the company. And the title of my master thesis was the investigation of the effectiveness of methods to inhibit mold growth in food films. So that was my master thesis. So right with that, with the study and my job, my part-time job and my master thesis, I was really deep in the food, food safety and the quality control. 
and I was um, I was very lucky that the company I had already worked like Friedland I had already worked when I finished my degree like one and a half years there as a trainee. So they offered me a full time position after I um, completed my master's degree. And in January 2019, I started working there full time. The, again, in the quality control lab, where I already worked as a trainee. And um, there I was, um, I was responsible for chemical, physical, microbiological analysis of the different herbs, spices, grains that Balkan produces. And my main focus there was HPLC. It's a very, very um, diverse but small lab. So there were a lot of um, a lot of different analyses, but my focus was mainly HPC, but I got to see a lot of different things. So after working at Bibland um, full-time from 2019 on, I decided um, at the end of last year, beginning of this year, that I wanted to do something different, but still stay in the, in the field of food and food safety, because to me, that's kind of where my heart stuck. So I um, started to look around what kind of possibilities I had um, outside of quality control. And that's when I found the position of a product manager at Roma Labs. And yes, I applied there and luckily I got taken. So since March this year, um, 2021, I work as a product manager at Roma Labs. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit what I do now. So like before I worked in quality control, a lot of lab work, a lot of really, I learned a lot of really important things and gained a lot of experience there that I can apply now in my new job. So as a product manager, um, it's my responsibility to support the development of the product strategies for Roma Labs. Um, I also oversee product life cycles from the strategic planning to tactical activities and global product launches. Um, I conduct market analysis and monitor the competitors and trends to ensure a competitive market approach. I also try to ensure and conduct product trainings for the sales teams and also the distribution partners. Um, and also one of, my, one of my areas is to, de to, to develop and implement like literature, literature content tools and trainings to successfully launch new products. And also in, with that, prepare product presentations or demonstrations and present products like somewhere like a conference or something. So um, being at Roma Labs as a product manager basically means being part of the cross-functional teams, team with colleagues from a lot of different areas, like we work together with sales, with marketing, with R&D, and with production, and I support all of the people so we kind of um, um, have a successful product strategy in home. So like I already said, I've oh, only been at, at Roma Labs for three and a half months now, so I'm not as experienced as some of my colleagues, but it's it's really fun working there, and I enjoy all the new possibilities and also challenges this job, challenges this job brings, and I'm really looking forward to learning more here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eleonora, for um, this nice overview of a really interesting career path. Uh, I just will uh, urge everybody to write their uh, questions and their curiosities in the chat. Uh, and I will stir up the discussion with one question. So you said you like uh, all the um, new things, but also all the challenges. So can you share with us what would be the, the things that you like the most about your job as a product manager? And on the other side, what are your challenges? Um, what I enjoy most is basically, I would say the learning of it all. I had, I had a lot of learning to do. Um, I'm product manager, I didn't say it in the type of my, mycotoxin and the field of mycotoxins. And I had a lot of learning to do there. So I really, really enjoy like testing the products I'm responsible for. Like I'm, I oversee the product life cycles, I've got a lot to get in the lab and test it all out and see how, it's, how, how it works in practical because that's, in my opinion, 
how I can support like sales and marketing and the production most if I know what I'm doing basically. And the challenge for me would have been um, maybe the interdisciplinary of all things. Like in quality control, I had my schedule, I had, I had my, it, it was one field for me. But now with, um, with the product, product manager position, it's the thing I enjoy a lot, but it's also challenging to work with so many different departments to try to get, get them all on the same page because everybody has their different interests and everybody thinks things different things are the most important, but like what's important is the, the, the coolness of it all. So it's kind of, sometimes it's challenge, challenging to bring everybody to the same page. Okay, thank you. I, I, we have a first question from the audience. Uh, Carlotta uh, Gogel from FH Campus Wien is asking, uh, can I also become a product manager as a biotechnologist or do you, just a second, or mm -hmm. uh, can I also become a product manager as a biotechnologist or do they uh, prefer people uh, with a business background? Um, you can definitely become a, um, a product manager with a biotechnologist background because I, for example, in my study, I had a business background, but I didn't work in the field. So I didn't have a lot of business experience myself. I had theoretical experience from my studies but I work only in quality control, like in the scientific aspect um, of, of the field before that. So um, actually, I think in my, in the, the job description I listed, um, I, I applied for, like my job description, it's, it's stated that, um, that they want um, someone um, with a master's degree in some kind of bio, biotechnology something. And that um, marketing experience or experience uh, sales or business is a plus, but it's not mandatory. So yes, you can definitely become a product manager as a biotechnologist. Actually, I think um, it is preferred that you have um, experience in, in, really in the scientific field because then you understand the products more. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Maybe I can add on here, um, Eleanor and Srinka, that uh, actually Eleanor wouldn't have got the job if she only had a business background. It is the sci life science background that got her the job, besides the soft skills. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Claudia. This was very important input. And I also, my uh, next question would be to stir up, to, to warm up for the, the workshop on soft skills. What do you think, and probably Claudia will maybe add now or later on, which uh, soft skills do you think you, you, uh, you need for a product management position? That's, that's a hard question. I hope Claudia can understand. Uh, Eleonora, I will just need you to uh, come a bit closer to the microphone. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. No, no, okay. no problem, no problem. Um, it's kind of a hard question, I think, because um, product manager, I don't think that one one set of soft skills is like the correct one. I think it, it depends on, on the field and on how your personality as well. But you, I, um, I mean, Claudia, of course, can add something then. But I think it's the most important thing is the basic is to be very, as you, you have to really like the communication. You have to talk to people. You have to go up to them and ask the question. You can't really be passive, you have to be proactive for the job. That's definitely one plus. So, but with the specific set of soft skills, I, I would say Claudia would have to help me with that. But what I experienced from myself and also from all my colleagues that you really have to be, have to be, that you have to communicate a lot and that you have to like the communication to talk and the questions, don't be afraid to ask like a million questions. <laughs> Yeah, this is definitely a fact. So you you need to be an out to have some outgoing personality. If you'd rather like to sit in, in you know in room on your own and um, look into your computer, that would probably not then the the right opportunity for you. And this was also how um, Eleanor convinced us in the interview because she presented herself as a very extroverted, communicative, and outgoing person. Okay, thank you. Yeah. But also, and this was another part, um, also very structured. And this is when you have to deal with so many stakeholders, 
as a product manager, then you have to have a structured personality. You have to be very organized. Otherwise, uh, you mess it up completely, right? You're losing track. And, um, and you also have to be, uh, yeah, you know, be able to deal with different mindsets and, and, and also with some probably conflicts when you get under pressure, because as a product manager, you be pressured by R&D, you be pressured by sales, and uh, you need to stay calm and, and deal with these challenges on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these are like the, uh, I, I got the sense also when Eleanor said that she uh, needs to manage uh, different departments and then I also thought yeah communication skills would be also very important of course and we have because another I, question sorry I want, sorry. just want to add here you have to be aware of the fact that like um, R&D for so like the two departments R&D and sales they are never completely on the same page you both have the different interests and the that's fine, but you have to kind of combine those things. And as Claudia said, also different mindsets, I yes. guess, between these two uh, departments and yeah, because of the nature of their work and yes, exactly. education yes. and everything. Yeah. Uh, so we have another uh, question from the audience. Was uh, Danik Korde is asking, was German language a necessary requirement for your role as a product manager? I would have to give that question to Claudia. I, I'm not sure. Claudia, can you ask that? Uh, can you sure. answer that? For this role, uh, German was not a, re a requirement. We have roles where we need to um, have German, um, but actually uh, our company um, language is English because, because of our mother company, DSM. And uh, so English is, fluent English is, is really necessary. And if you speak German, it's a plus, of course. Mm -hmm. um, on the, if, if you would become a, you know, a, a manager who deals with uh, like um, lab workers or production workers, then you would need German because uh, these uh, employees don't, they don't understand English and, uh, or they don't speak English and, and it would be necessary for you to, that you understand them and that they understand you also for safety reasons. So these are the only roles where we really hire people who also speak fluent German. Um, because for safety reasons, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, this was a valuable input for our audience because our audience is usually international. So I think they uh, would uh, want to know if this is a requirement. And uh, yeah, I, I would have another question regarding, uh, so you had, uh, Eleanor, you had a lot of experience um, with the quality assurance, and then you went into product manager uh, management position as of recently. Can you tell us what you, you already touched upon that a bit? But can you tell us more? Uh, what are the biggest differences between these two positions, or what was? Yeah, I think um, like the the communication. Eleanor, we don't hear you. Does it work now? <laughs> Yeah, yeah when you're, obviously okay. you're a little. Okay, <laughs> I'm staying really close to the camera. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the communication with so many different people from so many different departments would be a difference. I actually never had um, contact or hardly ever had contact with um, sales or customers um, before in quality control. That was new for me. And also maybe the fact that there is not one right approach or right answer in quality control. You have your um, standard operation procedure, you work after that, and there's a result, and this result, um, you maybe do like um, more analysis on one sample or something like that, and you have, a, you have a right result at the end. But as a product manager, there is not, there's not really a right approach there. Um, you, you have different approaches um, that leads like to different different outcomes, but you can approach, you have to evaluate how your, yourself, how, how you want to approach some issues. And you have to like um, prioritize different things and you have to basically like with, of course, with support from your colleagues, but you have to decide for yourself how you, how, what's the best way to approach an issue or something like something similar. There's not one right way to approach something. It's, it's, it depends on the situation. 
Uh, thank you. Uh, I see our uh, chat uh, with questions is warming up. So uh, we have Jose Manuel Cruz uh, asking, I think this should, I mean, this is for Claudia and for Eleonora, but okay. Is the background working in industry before graduate studies and an asset? Um, Claudia, I would like to redirect that to you. I think you can answer that better. So it, it helped Eleanor definitely that she had a work experience in, in the quality field before. And uh, I mean, yes, of course. So working in industry before, if you have the chance to, to get an internship in, in industry, then it's always helpful. I know that it's very hard with some studies to, or you know, some some um, um, yeah studies out there to do that actually, um, but it's very helpful. So I can only recommend to do that. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And then uh, Stella, our Stella from Ilsa South is asking, what about time spent in the lab? Is there a big difference? I think you're asking between the quality assurance and the product management. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Yes, definitely. I, I don't spend time in the lab that often, usually just like, because I, I am not really into that um, standing operation procedures of the lab, people at Roma Labs, I usually just like work together with them or ask them if they, if they do something together with, with me, if they show me something, if I can show them something, but I, I'm, not, I'm not a person that works in the lab routine. I'm not a, per, I'm a as product manager, you are you are not a lab person anymore. It's like it's like you spend a little time in the lab, but it's not a lab job. Yeah, that's that's uh, I think uh, very good to know for our audience. Uh, and then, this was also excuse me, Srinka, This was also the reason why Eleanor applied because she didn't want to be in a lab anymore. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one, one needs to know what they want and what they don't want, and yeah, that's, yes. that's very good. Yes. But for this role, you need you, at least, you need some lab experience. So it, it also that's another thing. It wouldn't have worked out if she had no experience in working in the lab. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, that's that's important. I think all my colleagues, all my product manager colleagues, started with with lab jobs. Everyone started with lab jobs, and then they wanted to do something else, and then they ended in product management. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And. Uh, uh, I think we can uh, wrap up with the, with the last question. Uh, Andrea is asking, how did Claudia uh, test your outgoing personality and communicator skills? You're gonna have to ask Claudia. What um, I think she, um, what did she ask? At the, she, she basically asked me to tell something about myself and or not just professional, but also personal and um, like, she asked me what, what was, were my biggest challenges, what were my biggest possibilities, what are my hobbies, and how, how, how I, I like to work. Like, I think she tested out the organized, if I'm an organized person with that. And yes, I think so. And she asked me what I think were my weaknesses and my strength, like, strengths, like, what do my um, colleagues, my current colleagues like about working with, with me and what maybe noise them a little bit about me, something like that. Yes, maybe Claudia, you can add something to that. Yeah, we have we have a two-step interview session, a two-step interview process. So we have a first interview, which is uh, uh, done by the hiring manager and myself. And then we have a second round with case study and, and more managers or peers to join. And uh, Eleanor presented herself in the, in the first session as, uh, yeah, outgoing and communicative um, as in the second one. And, and then in the second one, it also, you know, the, the, you were even able to, to present this or to, to give us a much stronger impression on your, on, on, on all the, the soft skills we need for this job or you need for this job. So it's always a matter of like, you know, having twice the opportunity to meet the candidate Outside Corona, of course, we do that personally. In Corona, we only had the chance to do that virtually. And uh, so we, Eleanor and I talked about it like yesterday when she was like, oh, I, I, you hired me without having met me before and I didn't see the facilities. So I just started my first day without being there even once. And this was, yeah, a very interesting situation. So very, very new definitely. for all of us. Yeah, definitely. For the and second 
for the second round, excuse me, I, I, I want to add because in the second round where more people were, um, I had to do a case study and I, I don't know, but I think what impressed people because I put a lot of time in that case study. I think the work, um, because I was on vacation, it was like um, uh, um, my, my second round was after the um, holidays, after the winter holidays. And I think I spent like four or five whole days, really whole work days preparing for that. So that's like, you really have to show them that, that you want this. I have like one uh, question here. Uh, I, I know what it is, but I think for our audience, can you explain what is case study? That is like, if you get, um, if you get a, um, a, a kind of theme or a problem or some kind of question, and you have to, to work, work it out, um, research and do a presentation. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. In the second thank round, you. yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we would uh, have also a question from uh, Leila Potoi. I'm sorry if I misread the name. Would you uh, please explain a typical working day of a product manager? Um, I, I like to say there are not really typical days. Every day is a little bit different, but typically I would say like I, I come in the company and first I like check my emails because we are a very international company. So there are always emails coming in at night because like when it's when it's eight, eight o'clock in the morning in Austria, it's already 2 p.m. in Singapore or something like that. So you get emails around the clock. But so you always have emails in the morning. And then I always have my to-do list because I'm a structured person. And then I start um, working after the to-do list. I talk with different pe people. So depending on what um, my to-do list contains, I go to the R&D team, I go to the analytical service team, I go to my product management colleagues, I ask them what, what um what I should do if I'm not sure what I should do. I also have a lot of meetings um, with my colleagues. And otherwise, I um, what I really um, like to do and what it's really important is like to do competitor studies, like to, to go on all the websites of the competitors and see what they are doing, if there's anything new with them. And also to um, sometimes to do some, to write some, um, um material like marketing to, to help the marketing people write the marketing materials and what else um yes to do research on the on the competitors or set it and sometimes in test products in the lab or if you have a product launch coming up just um, go to the production department and check when they can start production if there is an issue with QC something like that go to the QC department and talk that through and of course there's also what's like every day a little bit is questions from sales managers sales managers um, get questions from the customers and if they are too technical for themselves to answer they forward them to us and then we help them okay thank you thank you Eleonora um Thank you actually for uh, unraveling the product manager, uh, management job profile for us and enabling our audience to decide whether this kind of a position and job would be for them. Mm -hmm.